A fix is coming for federal contracting. Democratic Senator Gary Peters and Republican Joni Ernst are trying to correct a misunderstanding of congressional intent when it comes to how and when agencies should consider price when reviewing proposals for contracts. Senator Ernst is the ranking member of the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Committee. She tells executive editor Jason Miller why she believes the bill will let agencies push cost reviews back to the task order level. We know that all businesses benefit from acquisition uniformity across the government. So the Department of Defense already does this strategy, um, but a lot of our small businesses would really see a boost if we saw that uniformity across government. So this bill would allow small business owners to bid on valuable contract opportunities based on their actual skill and expertise, rather than forcing those small businesses to compete using more of an arbitrary price competition model that could otherwise exclude qualified and capable small contractors. I think we have some traction on this because it is bipartisan. There is a real hunger with our small businesses to see this opportunity. So we are going to keep working on this. Hopefully we'll be able to get some hearings scheduled on it, bring small business owners in that can talk to this, but you know, would love to see this pass uh, in this upcoming year. You all have been very, very busy on the Senate Small Business Committee, specifically looking at a lot of different government contracting areas over the last year or so. For 2024, what are some of those top government contracting small business priorities that you're interested in? The first one is improve the federal contracting landscape for our small businesses. And one of the other priorities would be to maintain focus on commercialization in the small business innovation research and small business technology transfer programs. So the first one, the federal contracting landscape for small businesses, Federal News Network has actually covered this before, but my Access for Small Businesses Act. And what that essentially does is require federal agencies to increase accessibility of government contracts by making sure that small business contracts are written in very plain language, not in government jargon, so that our small businesses and those very, very busy owners and employees can actually understand what those contracts are for and how to apply for them. It also allows them to achieve an A on their small business scorecard or testify before Congress on why they uh, they failed to do so if they're not you know, expanding access for those small businesses. And then it also makes sure that the Small Business Administration's contracting scorecard measures the health and variety of small businesses, because sometimes we get in a very narrow lane of where we're offering contracts. So we just really want to make sure that through this effort, we're supporting opportunities for small business owners to participate. The second point, Jason, was um, maintaining that focus on these programs, the SBIR, STTR programs. Um, Our innovation ecosystem here in the United States is really our, our greatest strategic advantage when we're trying to counter adversaries. And so we're trying to transition small business R&D from labs and garages, you know, to innovate equipment in the field. And and we have to remain focused and have that as the central focus of the SBIR, STTR programs. These programs are going to expire or set to expire in 2025. And so I'm working on legislation to reverse uh, the consolidation of the industrial base by helping small businesses in SBIR, STTR, and help them accelerate the commercialization of their critical technologies. I know it's a little wonky. These are really good programs. We want to keep them going and offering these opportunities to small businesses. Let me go start with the last piece when you talk about the SBIR and STTR program. You mentioned the expiration in 2025. I remember it got renewed most recently. There's a lot of concern, uh, I think, with Senator Paul, who was very concerned about these. 
do you think a lot of the concerns about the programs, you know, the SBIR mills, the, the too many people winning, you know, but not ever going yep. to commercialization, do you think a lot of those concerns have been satisfied or are being satisfied either through data? Have you, have you all started to look at that a little bit? Well, and I am actually still working through those issues, Jason, because I have seen that trend where there is a consolidation and contracts given to known or existing small businesses, and they continue to receive awards. And what we have seen then is the movement of all of those contracts to those known providers, known entities, and large in part, if you look at where these entities are located, many of these businesses are typically on our coast. So they continue to get award after award after award. They are the ones that are on the East Coast or the West Coast. And we have a large swath of middle America, like where I live in Iowa, where small businesses have just given up on trying to compete against those that have competed for, for years and years and years. They have the system down. They know how to fill out these packets. They know how to get the contracts. And they're squeezing others out that have not been able to secure those contracts. So what we have seen is a consolidation of those awards within individual companies and along our coastlines. So I am still very, very concerned about that. These are good programs, but we want to make sure that this consolidation in the industrial base does not continue and that we are giving opportunity to small businesses all across the United States. I'm glad you brought up the industrial base. I know that's been a big focus of, of Congress, of the Biden administration, of, of previous administrations looking at how do we expand that industrial base. And that brings us back around to your other bill, the, the Improving Small Business uh, Access Act. What are some of the things you see as, as what can be done in the meantime? Are you looking at hearings? Are you looking at letters? Are you having meetings with SBA and others about how to get rid of that government jargon and how to reach out to a broader swath of the small business community, as you said, whether it's on the coast or middle America or wherever? And it is all of the above. And we have to use our leverage as members of Congress to uh, force the discussion sometimes through letters, through meetings and phone calls with uh, officials over at the Small Business Administration, but also getting the information from our constituents. We can never forget that we represent our own states. We have the small businesses within our own communities, and we need to know from their perspective, what is the right way to move forward? What are those obstacles that the federal government has thrown into your path that maybe we can help you navigate, whether you have to go around it, over it, below it, whatever it is. We need to figure out a way for those small businesses to be able to work with the federal government. Hearings are always very important. That is something that uh, Chairwoman uh, Jean Shaheen and I have been working on. Uh, I do have to say it's been a little tough communicating with the Small Business Administration. When Ben Cardin was the chair, we ran into roadblocks at every opportunity. Even when we were acting in a bipartisan manner, we would have letters that were not responded to or even acknowledged uh, at the SBA. So it has been tough. When you have an agency that, as we move through this administration, is ever pulling away from what we as representatives from our own states believe would be the best opportunity for small businesses. We have an SBA that is not engaging as much as they should. Iowa Senator Joni Ernst, ranking member of the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Committee, speaking with Federal News Network's Jason Miller. Later on, check out Jason's story at federalnewsnetwork.com.